Hey guys, tonight I'm going to be talking about who we are in Christ. Have you ever heard one of those messages that's like, who were you at the cross? Were you Mary? Were you the crowd that was cheering and kill him? Were you the soldier that pierced his side and nailed him to the cross? Or were you one of the criminals beside of him? And you know, you, you hear messages like that a lot of the times in church today. And you know, you get asked that question. And really, the people that are, the ministers that are asking you that, they're not even presenting that. They're not even asking you if you are the right answer to who you are. That's like giving a test, and the, the answer to the question is D, but they're only giving you as options A, B, and C. And so you're settling for what man has considered to be best, when really God's best is way better and true. It's like, what? Well, just bear with me for a second. You know, you we get those messages like that, who you are at the cross. I've heard messages like that time and time and time again. And I'm like, guess what? None of the above. That's my answer. It's like, well, well who are you? And so that's what I'm going to ask you. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Think about it. Do you know who you are? Are you just so-and-so, just Zach? Or are you in Christ? Do you know who you are in Christ? <clears throat> and so when it come, go back, going back to that question about who you are at the cross, at the scene of the cross, are you the soul, God of the side of him, the soldier, Mary, whatever, the crowd, blah, whatever. Galatians chapter 2 says, in verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by faith the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so, we aren't looking at those other people at the cross. Colossians 3.3 3 says that our lives are hidden with God, or in Christ, with God, in God. We are hidden with Christ in God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that we have been made the righteousness of God in him. In who? In Christ. Or in whom, whatever, if you're going to be a grammar Nazi. But in Christ, we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. We have been made to God's level of perfection because of what Jesus has done. And by simply believing on him and confessing him as our Lord and Savior, and believing that he has risen from the dead, you join and take part in that life, that spiritual perfection. Colossians 2.10 says that you are complete in him and so that's who we are we are complete in Christ it's like well then why doesn't it look like I'm complete in your spirit man the inner self your the real you that's the one that's complete it's like well I don't feel like I'm complete you're not gonna feel it the Bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit and that's Jesus telling you know you're not gonna be able to feel the spirit we say that we feel the spirit all the time we feel his leading we feel the imprints he's leaving on our heart but you're not feeling him like with your hands you can't you feel the effects of the anointing in the air the effects of the spirit in the air in the atmosphere but you can't necessarily touch the spirit like you can't just grab hold of it because it's not flesh Jesus said that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit and so we release that by faith by becoming mindful and aware that what Jesus has said and what the Word has said is not a promise as to where something that's going to come to pass, but it's something that has already been done. And that's the way it is. You've been made God's perfection in Christ. Anything that you will ever need has already been given to you. The Bible says that He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He has blessed us. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. First, or Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 says, We've we've been given it all. And all you have to do when you approach a situation is says, Hey, it's already mine. Victory's already mine. I'm walking on my victory right now. It's here. I don't have to ask for it. It's already here. And so you just declare by faith. Just release it. Follow the leading of the Spirit of God. He'll show you. It's like, hey, I'm here. It's like, okay, well, just follow me. And he'll just, like, lead you and be like, okay, here it is. And it's like, wow, that was easy. And it is. We make it too complicated. But like I said, victory is already yours. Don't struggle for it. Don't pray for it. 
because it's already yours. You don't have to pray for victory because the victory is already yours. You just have to celebrate. Just be like, hey, it's mine. I have it now. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.